Hello there. In this episode, we will be doing everything experimental. So nothing is pre-planned. Only there are a few topics we will be covering. So first one we will be talking about Azure DevOps triggers or pipeline triggers also. And second thing, the conditional pipeline execution. So let's get started. What I'm going to do in our previous episode, we have connected AWS cloud with our Azure DevOps. There were some mistakes, a lot of mistakes, some bad implementations. And let me show how that is a bad implementation in terms of pipeline execution, not connecting the AWS or other parts. The trigger was having some problem. And let me show you that what I have done. I've done some changes on the main branch. That means I've added few files under a folder, which is called AWS episode eight, which has nothing to do with episode seven, right? Those are two different folders under AZ DevOps. Let me push everything. So let me git add doing git commit with some message, then git push. And as you see, it's on the main branch. So let me just check the branch as well. Git, yeah, git branch. I'm on main git push and let us see how it does everything on Azure DevOps. As you see, it is pushed. Let us go to Azure DevOps. And as you see, I have not touched any code of episode seven, which we used in earlier episode and the pipeline is getting executed. So this is initial episode eight and it is running. And why is that? Because if I go to the pipeline definition YAML file and if I go to the trigger section, I have simply specified trigger main. That means any changes on main branch is going to trigger this pipeline. And maybe we do not want to trigger this pipeline from entire main branch. That means might be we want to trigger it from particular directory, which might be AWS episode seven, something like that, right? So we will be talking about triggers a little bit more now. So now our pipeline execution got successful. So what I'll do, I'll just simply change to some non-existent branch for this episode seven. I do not want to trigger every time from main. So that is saved and whatever new trigger implementation we will be talking on AWS episode eight, the same exact replica of episode seven. I have copied that into episode eight and I have done some little bit changes in the episode seven. I used AWS CLI to create the bucket, but in AWS episode eight, I have replaced that with a Terraform. So basically I've created two simple Terraform files, this one and this one. So I want to store my backend or the TF state file in one bucket, which is already created, not part of this Terraform code. It was already created and simply I am creating a bucket, whatever name I want. And bucket name is DL as a DevOps episode eight, something like that. Nothing fancy. This is very simple Terraform code and you can use whatever platform you like, Python, AWS CLI, whatever you like. Along with our trigger, we will be also discussing about conditional runs and to run multiple times Terraform is better because if it is already created, Terraform will skip that part. If I run Terraform apply again and again, it will not impact. So that is why I've chosen Terraform now. But yeah, let's discuss about the triggers in our earlier pipeline. We used a simple single branch. Obviously, this trigger can be on multiple branches because this hyphen denotes it's a list. So let's forget about the earlier episode. And I have given some non-existent branch, which is no main and it will not get executed. Now, modifying that trigger with this kind of thing. Again, it starts with trigger to define. We are defining some triggers. Now we are saying branches. This branches means we want to trigger using some branches and we are saying these are the branches should trigger and we are specifying main and any branch, whatever you like. So this is our development branch and this is our main branch. And in the previous one, what we have seen, we have not defined any path that that means we have not defined any directory from where it can be triggered. If I do any changes on any file, on this entire repository, it was triggering that. So to avoid that, what I'm including, there is a parameter under trigger called paths and under the paths, I'm saying include. That means whatever I include in this list, this hyphen or dash denotes, I can define multiple trigger paths. So I'm giving only one and I'm saying inside the repository, go to is it DevOps 
AWS episode 8 and star means any file. If I update any file inside this AWS episode 8, it is going to trigger. How it is triggering? It will look for the branches and there are two branches and it is going to look into this particular directory. And whenever there is any change in this directory for these two branches, this pipeline will be executed. Simple. This is our older stuff where it is going to run Ubuntu. This variable part, let's skip it for now. We'll discuss it a little bit later. Same structure stage, create storage and this that create storage from earlier episode I have divided into two parts. Initial I am going to do the Terraform plan and next in the same job I am going to Terraform apply in another task. And interestingly you'll see I have added a condition and in the previous task where I am only executing Terraform plan, I am not giving any condition. So whenever the trigger is taking part, that step will be executed always. It depends on the triggers. And the second task along with the trigger or I'll say on top of that, I am specifying one condition. And this condition starts with EQ. EQ is, is equal to. So whenever in any programming languages, we normally define if x equals to equals to 10 maybe we execute something right then maybe else we execute something so in similar fashion this equal to is nothing but this equal to in programming languages now we are saying inside that equal to expression variables so we are accessing some predefined variables which is called build dot source branch name this is a predefined variable and you can see the documentation i'll give all the links like this pipeline condition, you can have multiple conditions equal to and any other thing like that. Along with that, I'll give this link as well. We can have multiple predefined variables and we can access those values for our different needs. So by saying that, what I'm doing, I'm accessing the branch name. And if it is main, then only I am going to execute this. So that means from our development branch, what we are specifying develop over here, the first task will be executed on main and develop but the next task will be executed only on main so that is how we develop in typical ci cd structure whenever we push anything we maybe want to get a plan or want to do some testing so we can check the terraform plan once you are satisfied we can push that to main and once the changes are into main then actual implementation can happen that means i can actually create the resources on main branch and same goes to the job also so next job basically it is uploading something on that particular bucket which we are going to create using that terraform and here on the job same condition so i have taken a different variable this time so this variable is source branch name and it typically takes only the name like main developer whatever branch name it is this branch is source branch and this looks like this refs heads and any branch name so both are similar this will give you a raw branch name and this will give you entire reference to the branch so whatever approach you want you can use so both will be executed on main only simple app and obviously condition can be given on job or at task level as well let me do one thing let me create a pipeline because the previous push was done already which had these changes so let's create one pipeline out of the new yaml file which we have pushed so for that click on new pipeline continuing the previous one it is still on the github so i'll be taking github so similar to our last example it is taking the personal repositories i need to click on the little connection link and it is showing my organization this is my organization and this is my repository click on that existing azure pipeline yaml yaml file is pushed so main branch is fine now and this is episode 8 this is the yaml click on continue and i do not need to run it now because as you remember from our earlier episode the variable group need to be linked because i need to access those credentials for aws connection click on save the new pipeline has been created now let me go into edit mode once you are into edit mode click on three dots button at the right side then click on triggers and from the triggers window let me change the name otherwise it is little bit confusing so this is so this is our episode 8 let me click on variables now 
and I need to link that variable group. Click on variable groups, link variable group. It was already open for all pipelines for my project. Oh, it was created for episode 7, correct. Click on link. You can expand that and see the values, AWS ID and key, which we are using. So irrespective of the cloud, it doesn't matter. Our concept is how we trigger it. And obviously on the condition part, how we can conditionize our tasks or jobs depending on our needs. So things are fine now. Now I can or maybe just save it because I want to push something from develop branch. Okay, so comment is fine. Save. Now I can go to pipelines just to verify if it is created. Yes, the pipeline is created. So let me do one thing. Let me create a branch quickly as per our trigger for this episode, which is develop. Okay, so git checkout hyphen b for branch and this is develop and let me quickly check the branch git branch we are on develop now the changes i'm going to push from develop only and this is fine and let us see if the pipeline gets triggered from develop git add dot git commit git push it is pushed with a new branch on the git and let us check the pipeline and somehow it is having some error let us check okay it is saying that in any step i cannot use a hyphen in the name and it was good because i told you it will be completely experimental i have not planned anything okay let me change that now so maybe i'll just get rid of these hyphens and let me save that other names seems to be fine and let me push so that means whatever it is failed or not it has triggered our pipeline from develop as per our logic git add dot fix the names git push so now push is done let me move to azure devops now the new run is queued now let me click on the job and some more error it is showing some bad credentials i think backend yes the basically problem was i deleted the older user for which we have set the username and password so i'm replacing that with some new username and password or that means aws secret id and key and i'm updating the variable group let me click on save and let's rerun our pipeline it can be rerun manually as well or it can be a push from the desired branches as per our trigger definition and maybe let's trigger this from the branch itself git commit trigger again git push it is pushed and hope for the best and let's see this time how it goes indeed a new run trigger again yeah now plan is executed successfully and let's see with the valid access secret key it is good now and it is showing it is going to create a bucket as for our terraform definition and as you see the terraform apply got skipped and why is that as this is from the develop branch if i hit git branch this is on develop and here the condition is taking place we are saying if source branch name is equals to main or not similarly the same is being replaced with source branch and it is taking the complete reference to the branch both are similar and the job or i'll say this is a task level and it can be given at job level as well let me change it instead of the task let it put at job level here are some changes trigger with a new push git add and this is how devops works change on the fly on development branch obviously so this is our message change the trigger git push again it is pushed and let's see how so this is our pipeline another new task with this trigger condition we can do our plan and testings once we are satisfied we can go for the actual deployment in some other trigger condition which is basically main for us and as we are using the controlled or conditional deployment this works good for us so now you see the complete job is skipped and this is our evaluation string it was looking for main instead of that it got develop and develop is not equals to main obviously result is false now we are satisfied with our plan and we can go ahead and do the changes on main and let us do that let me do that from the console itself instead of directly pushing into main let me create a pull request now and new pull request this will be from develop at the right side to the main to the left side yeah these are the changes and whatever it is let me create the pull request 
final deploy click on create pull request and merge pull request so this will basically push all the changes to the main and that should trigger our a uh, not git actions that will be our devops pipeline interestingly i was not expecting this the pull request itself has created a deployment this is the first time i am doing oh it has skipped few things okay pr is not treated as a push to the main but yeah plan worked and i think as it was from the develop to main so i think it was for the develop actual main or the merge request should create all the resources and the upload should happen oh something has happened here let's see okay so it is saying no credentials found and i know where is the mistake i was expecting in a same job whenever i do or maybe i set up some environment variables that should be copied or maybe replicated over to the next task in the same job but that's not the case interesting and that's good and i pasted that same thing on the develop again this is how the devops should go so any changes should happen on your development branch and finally it should go on main git add git commit any commit message and git push now it is pushed another pipeline should be triggered or pipeline run should be triggered and let me quickly create the pull request so the new pull request again it should be from develop to main create pull request create pull request again and march i want the changes to be on the main branch again two more runs one for pr it will again give the plan another for the main and let's wait a little bit or maybe i can cancel this run that is also doable so once you go into the pipeline execution at the right side you will get this cancel button click on cancel and yes i do not want for this intermediate plan again because the push itself was good i want the actual main and which is sitting at the top and if i go inside the job it is skewed now meanwhile it runs let us do one more experiment and let's see the pipeline definition again in the trigger as you see the path is defined and any changes on this aws episode 8 will trigger this and obviously let's see if i do some changes on the readme.md whether it is going to trigger again or not so some changes save this file same step git add so commit then git push and i know it is going to trigger the pipeline and maybe we do not want to trigger the pipeline for any readme files how to do that we'll check that and let's move to the as your devops console apply got failed due to some problem a oh, bucket got created i messed around because i took some old codes so i do not have permission to set the acl or access control list that's fine that's not a problem but our bucket got created as you see over here the bucket was created and the upload was also done let me go to the upload and as you see upload is also done let us quickly check whether the bucket got created or not and this is episode 8 yeah as so this is the newly created s3 bucket let's go inside and meanwhile it loads let's check the run as you see as we have updated the readme file it also triggered the plan from develop branch and maybe we do not want anything for any changes on readme or maybe there are certain files for that we do not need to trigger so what we do so let us go to yeah here is the upload.txt now let's do one thing let me add exclude and it looks something like this and exclude readme.md it should be including the path as well git push another will be triggered for the yaml file update yeah now this is the fix trigger and let me update the readme again and we can also use some wild cards as well like readme then star it will take whatever matching pattern in that name so some more update save it git push the push is done and let me refresh my pipelines so as you see there is no new pipeline execution and obviously with the conditions we can control the outcome of any task or job whether it should be skipped or it should be continued and that's basically about it thanks for watching see you in some next amazing videos